economist once said, the study of money, above all other fields in economics, is one in which complexity is used to disguise truth or evade truth, not to reveal it. What is the truth about money? How is money created? Money creation by banks is as simple as skipping a stone. With each skip, money is created. In our current system, banks have the power to create and profit from making money, creating booms and busts, cycles. When we deposit money into the bank, it is loaned out, goes into the economy, is deposited back into the bank, and loaned out, and the process continues. When you deposit $100 in the bank, you throw a stone. The bank lends out $90, the stone skips, and money is created. The bank now owes you $100 and is owed $90, double counting $90. And the borrowers spend the $90, it is then deposited with 90%, $81, lent. The stone skips and more money is created and the process continues. If you add up every skip, by the time the stone sinks to the bottom of the lake, $900 has been created. When $900 is repaid, it is destroyed. Banks have the power to create money, and this leads to boom and bust cycles. You get a mortgage for $100,000, which is spent in depositing the banks. If $100 creates $900, $100,000 creates $900,000. More money in the economy leads to higher prices. When housing prices go up, banks make more money off larger and larger loans. When the prices keep going up until there's a shock, say, higher oil prices, by now, the average home prices have gone up from $100,000 to $200,000. Eventually, people decide they won't pay $200,000 for a home. They say they lost their job, they, they just can't afford their payments. Soon, people start to default. Banks, banks start to get kind of scared. So, they loan out less money, they cut back. Well, that means there's less money in the economy. Because when money is created, there's more money in the economy. Less lending, less money in the economy, less money for people to repay the banks. Less people repay the banks, less money the banks want to lend out, less money in the economy, and so forth. So we climb up a peak of lending. There's a boom, but eventually, we're tumbling down the peak from which we came. Eventually, more and more people start to default. Eventually, companies begin to default. People have less money. They have less money to buy goods from companies. Eventually, a company comes to a bank. Every year, a certain period, they've always gotten a loan to bridge the period between when they pay out and are paid. They're good credit risk, but the bank's hurting pretty bad. They ask the bank for a loan. The bank says, you know, sorry, we, we just can't do that. But this isn't, this, this isn't a normal company around the block. This is a large employer of tens of thousands of people. So the, the, the employer just looks at the bank and says, well, we need that money. We need it to make our payroll. We're not exactly skipping stones. We're doing more than that now. What is the impact of booms on the environment and the bust on families? What happens to a family when a parent loses a job, a home, when they can't feed their children? These booms and busts have happened for hundreds of years, with banks creating money and profiting from loans and the interest from them. One could say the public never took away the right of banks to create money and profit from creating money because they never knew the danger of the simple things happening right before them. What would the world look like if they did? What's possible? Thank you.